that meticulous lead out trains in the business. And the trophy there was given to him by Bertrand Delanou, the mayor of Paris, as in his colors of HTC High Road, an American team from St. Louis Obispo in California. Uh, he's gone into his team colors because very soon he'll be back here to receive the green jersey as winner of this race on points. Bernard Eno there congratulating Mark Cavendish. As we now see, now I see, I think Craig Hummer is there. Let's see if he can pick up Mark Cavendish. Craig. Mark, first British man to win the G green jersey. You and I both know anything meaningful is worth fighting for. At times, you make these wins look so easy, but how tough has this been on you to win this green jersey? No, incredibly tough. Um, yeah, we've had to work so, so hard for it. We're super, super. I've got to go with this. Okay. <laughs> he's got to go, gang. <laughs> we'll try to get him again. Well, it looks like he's been called away there because, of course, he's coming up right now to receive his green jersey. So we'll cover that in a few moments. Well done, Craig Hummer. Though. He gets in there, Craig. It's not easy, believe me, to get to the riders of the Tour de France. But here he comes back on stage, this time to receive, I presume, the Mayo Vert. This well, is the military attaché here who is making the presentation. And this is the first time the United Kingdom has ever seen this. And uh, the Tour de France began in 1903. The first British cyclist took part at the just after the turn of the century. We've waited an awful long time to see the green jersey pulled on the shoulders of a British cyclist who will be the first to remind me he comes from the Isle of Man. Yeah, Andrew Bishop, the uh, the military attaché from the uh, Embassy of Great Britain, and uh, we'll see Mark Cavendish a little bit later on when they bring up all of the all of the jersey presentations. But this is an extremely proud moment, I'd have to say, for him and for the Island of Man. Yes, tremendous pictures there as uh, Mark Cavendish gets what he's uh, he's nearly had in the past, being robbed to him controversially so with uh, spin decisions and the referees docking him points, etc. But this one's for real. He has won that now, and he's, uh, he's uh, now his next target next year will be to take the top sprinter's record and get more than 22 stage wins in history. He's got 20. Now, I wonder if Craig is going to try again. I think he is. All right, Mark. Well, I guess I should have read the protocol handbook. Thanks for coming back to us. Talk again about how tough of a how tough of a job this has been for you to win this green jersey. Yeah, super hard, you know. I think in last year's, they changed the rules this year. You know, if you win more stages, to give you more points, which suited us. But the park over harder, the, the course was harder, you know. So, uh, in other years, I probably would have got the green jersey just by <laughs> riding and winning. But this year, we've really had to work for it. We worked with nine guys. The other eight guys have done incredible. They've been super, super committed. And uh, and you saw today, they finished off in style. I'm super, super proud of everyone. And uh, oh, it's great to finally be able to see this on Paris. You always give credit to your team. You make sure it's well-deserved. But was there a time at all during this quest that you doubted you could finally be here in Paris in green? I think the whole time it was going to be tough. You know, we just have to keep fighting to the line. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I said it all along. It wasn't going to be an easy task. And uh, we'd have to just keep plugging away, getting points, getting points, getting points. And that's what we did. It could have been, it, for me, I had a target to get the jersey in. But for the others, it could have been easy for them to give up. But they didn't. You know, they worked. They stuck behind me. And, uh, and we did it. So. Congratulations on a historic day. A proud boy being taken away for more interviews there. This is how it finished. Mark Cavendish wins in the end by quite a clear margin because he won the 45 at the finish. 3.34 played 2.72 of Rojas. Uh, Philippe Gilbert, those top three were in the fight throughout the three weeks. And while that interview was going on, the polka dot jersey, the final winner's jersey presented here to the Olympic champion, Samuel Sanchez who when he realized he couldn't win the Tour de France, he went for the King of the Mountains and he won it on the climb of Alpe d'Huez. And those are his two young children there. Proud moment for them as well, standing on the podium in the, uh, under the shadow of the Arc de Triomphe. This is the final standings. He got 108 points, didn't have to worry about the weekend. There weren't any mountains. Andy Schleck finished second there, 98. Jella Van Aner, a new discovery from Belgium. Jella, he was finished in third. And Cadell Evans finished in fourth, but only with 58 points. We've gone back up now, Paul, to the white jersey presentation at the moment and the big cheers reserved for a Frenchman. 
Well, I'm not sure which you prefer, Phil, uh, the white jersey or actually being a, a winner at the top of the Alpe d'Huez because this is a magical tour, not only for him, but the whole of Team Europe car with Thomas Vokler having that yellow jersey. These guys did an awful lot of work. It was on that final day when Vokler started to crack, he was given his own card to play. And I tell you what, he seriously took it. Well, good for him. He got his award there from the president of French television, too, which uh, they've done an incredibly good job of televising the Tour de France. And uh, are we looking at a man who might be replicating Cadell Evans? Maybe three years down the road. He's very young yet, uh, but he's shown us he can climb. He's not a bad time trialist. He may have it. Well, I think the important thing, Phil, is that there are four Frenchmen finishing inside of the top 15 this year, and that will give France uh, something to, uh, to wish for over the next few years. The man on the right would be uh, very happy, I think, not to be the last winner of the Tour de France for France, Bernard Hino, and he would like to see French cycling start to take off. He would. Well, Pierre Rollins is for the best young rider, and he finishes top of the pile. The men that finished closest to him was Rain Tarame, uh, followed by Jerome Coppel and Arnold Johnson. Three of those guys are French and that's the future of French cycling. You know, it certainly is. The next man to come up. And this man has been an animator, I have to say. He's been in the breakaway. I don't know how many times, Phil. He's won himself the intermediate sprint point. I don't know how many times. Jeremy Roy. Jeremy Roy, as they say. We would say Jeremy Roy if we were speaking English. And he has been in the front of our camera day after day. Every time there's a break gone for the whole day, he was in there. And so he was awarded cumulatively, he was away so much, nearly 800 kilometers he spent in front, so he gets the most aggressive rider. Yeah, and I think if you had to uh, give uh, an award for the aggressive team, you'd also have to give it to his team, because FDJ were in nearly every breakaway, I think they were in every breakaway on the Tour de France, whenever something got clear off the front of the pack. Well, there's one jersey we haven't shown you yet, and uh, we're keeping the best till the end, so we will give uh, Jeremy Roy his great moment here, standing in the most coveted street in France as a Frenchman, has to be very special. Bernard Eno, the last winner of the Tour for France in 85, now standing alone on the podium as we wait for the arrival of Cadell Evans. Well, this will be the final uh, yellow jersey. Cadell has worn the yellow jersey in previous tours, but to, to wear it on the final day, that's what he's always wanted. That's what he's dreamed about for many, many years. And here he is. Cadell Evans salutes the crowd on the Champs-Élysées. There is a high, huge population of Australians here today. I think they've been catching aeroplanes over in the last week of the tour, knowing that this day was surely going to come one day. In 2007, he was second. In 2008, he was second, but led the race for five days. He held the jersey one day last year, fell off and broke his elbow, and he was in terrible trouble. But now he is the champion of the Tour de France, and he's the first man from the Southern Hemisphere ever to win this great event. He's going to save at this moment for a long, long time. Uh, it's interesting that he said, Phil, uh, that the end of the time trial was really quite easy for him yesterday because he knew at that point, he wasn't even thinking about trying to win the time trial. He knew at that point that he'd actually won the Tour de France and he cruised over the last three or four kilometres. Bertrand Delado there, the mayor of Paris, applauding him. A Canadian in Paris on a beautiful uh, late uh, midsummer's afternoon here as we move towards the evening as it approaches six o'clock. You'll never see the Champs-Élysées as empty as this uh, till the next Tour de France after he steps down. He won a time trial, he won a race at Mure de Bretagne. That was when he really signalled his intention to win this Tour. He finished it off in the time trial. Now it's time to hear Australia fair. Well, maybe it's not. Well, maybe we're calling others out. I think what the... Uh, we give the, uh, the first initial uh, presentation of the yellow jersey. Now we'll get the presentation for the top three, which will be the two select brothers from Luxembourg will climb up, and then I think we'll get a chance to hear the national anthem. Now this is going to be a first as well. Brothers on the podium. Their ambition was to be first and second. They've had to be content with second and first, the third, but they have been the most gracious men in defeat as they were in attack. Well, it's been a, it's been a great battle, Phil. So as we look uh, at Cadell Evans now, we've talked about this Schleck sandwich uh, of the last few days and in the middle. 
the filling proved a little bit too much for the indigestion of the two boys from Luxembourg. Three great athletes, though, have made this a tremendous Tour de France. And uh, it looks as though Chiara has come on as well. It's not Chiara. I think somebody's going to sing the national anthem, actually. Oh, you could be right. Well, the last few moments for him to uh, to savour this, the Champs-Élysées resplendent behind him. Here we go. about the best rendition I've heard of Advance Australia Fair and Cadell Evans is the first Australian to win the Tour de France in an emotional moment in uh, one of the world's finest settings. Now let's see what he's going to say. Je voudrais dire à tout le monde, merci à tout le monde qui avait la confiance dans moi, de, de tout mon collègue, merci à tout, merci à tout le groupe, tout mon concurrent, et tout le groupe de Tour de France cette année, le sport de cyclisme sont vraiment une expérience incroyable. An incredible experience. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's, who's had faith in me in my career. Oh boy, you can tell they're all Australian uh, now. From my teammates, my friends, my colleagues, and also my competitors and everyone here for the 2011 Tour de France. I think it's just been a, a beautiful race. And thanks to these two brothers here, we really, uh, I think it was a fantastic experience for everyone involved. And, Oh, I couldn't be happier than to be standing up right here in the middle here. Well said, Cadell. Pay uh, due homage there to the Schlex who made this the race of a lifetime for him. No, that was a brilliant performance uh, by the Schlex in the mountains, and I think it was uh, Cadell. I think now uh, can can savor this as being one of the one of the most exciting tours over the last few years. Andy Schlex was brave enough when he thought he'd lost the Tour de France to make an incredible breakaway of uh, 60 kilometers. Cadell Evans knew that that was the point he had to take responsibility and chased him down. Andy Schlex had a four-minute advantage. Cadell chased him back and pegged back two minutes, and it was those two minutes that probably at the end of that stage to the summit of the Galibier Phil gave him the overall victory. Then he knew going into the time trial that he had the confidence to uh, pull it all back. And uh, as he said, over the last four kilometers or so, he savored the victory, knowing that he'd got time between himself and Andy Schleck and Frank Schleck. Schleck is still young. That's Andy. It's only his fourth Tour de France. 11th in the white jersey in his first Tour de France in 2008. Second ever since. One day that win will come. Christian Prudhomme, the man on the right of that picture, is now far right of our picture. The organizer of the Tour de France, Jean-Étienne Amory, the president of the organization as well. And the head of a very powerful uh, family uh, armory organization, not only owning the, uh, the, the Tour de France, but many other of the great sporting events around the world, like the Paris Dakar and the Marathon of Paris. And also here in the presentation, too. Uh, David Ritchie, who is the ambassador to Australia here in France. And that is Prudhomme. 
He said the kindest things about the victory of Cadell Evans before the stage started. He said he was such a high personality in the world cycling. He had to be a winner of the Tour de France, and he witnessed one of the greatest races he's been the boss of. Yeah, certainly, you see the wind is still a little bit blustery there. And a few the last few moments of, uh, for the photographers to get themselves some pictures. Of what a magnificent backdrop for uh, Cadell Evans, and he will savor these photographs Phil, for many, many years to come. I think they're bringing the Luxembourg ambassador out here at the moment. No, this actually is the, uh, the Australian ambassador here who has been brought out. This is David Ritchie. And he's got a good word to say as well. Although I think he's the ambassador of Luxembourg at the moment, and that's why he's giving so much attention to the Luxembourg riders. He's been brought out especially. I think that's a nice gesture. Well, the next uh, award, the next presentation will be for the uh, the best team, and that will be the American team, Garmin Cervelo. As we look at the uh, the strongest three riders of the Tour de France this year, Cadell Evans in the middle, surrounded on either side by Andy Schleck on the left and Frank Schleck on the right. And what a great battle it was over the last uh, three or four days, especially the days in the Alps.